You know the best thing about Islam? The best thing about Islam is how simple it is because there's wrong and right. Mm. It's, it's a nice. simple religion. It's, well, it's wrong and right. I mean, you look at other religions and it's also subjective now. Yeah. And that's why I've said many times on different podcasts that it's the last true religion. If you don't have a strong barrier, if you don't have a yes and a no, you don't have a religion. If you tolerate everything, you stand for nothing. And if you believe in God and you say, I believe in God, but I'm not a Muslim, I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. You're a Christian. What is Christianity anymore? What does it mean? You, you can go to a Christian country and America, let's take, for example, and you'll get in more trouble for insulting George Floyd than you will for insulting Jesus Christ. Yeah, for sure. You literally, you can walk down the, t- the, the, walk down the street with a t-shirt saying Jesus is gay. Girls barely go to church. If they do, who knows what they were doing the night before. Mm. None of it means anything. And then if you go and find a Christian that says this trans person has, has changed gender, what do you think about that? Christians are so soft, they're going to go, well, I hope he finds redeem and I hope they, you know, he finds guidance. Haram, bro. Haram. <laughs> no, you didn't. It's haram. And I like that it's <clears throat> yes and no. And what's the point in... What's the point in a religion if you're too afraid to say what you believe in or afraid to stick up for it or yeah. afraid to, to defend it? Then what's the point in any of it? I'm watching Andrew Tate goes from being a Christian to being a Muslim. Okay. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, he's got a lot of influence with young men. So, hey, man, I love what this guy has to say. I agree with him. Why would a guy as great of a communicator as him and as many followers as he has, why would he become Muslim? I'm curious. I'm willing to bet he influenced a lot of other young men to also become Muslims. Cool. Let's put that there. Christianity. Okay. Catholic. We can put these together, right? Judaism. You're seeing what's going on here. How do you differ? If you were to, in a very basic way, as a professor, as a pastor, what is the difference between being a Christian, between being a Jew, between being a Muslim? All right. So... Jews believe that Jesus was not the Messiah and was not a good prophet. And he obviously wasn't God. Muslims believe that Jesus was a very good prophet. And a typical devout Muslim has far more respect for Jesus than a typical American. Because a devout Muslim believes that Jesus was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life. And because he was such a good prophet, God would never allow him to die on a cross, so he took him to heaven. So the cross and the resurrection are wiped out. But a devout Muslim believes that Jesus is going to return a second time. So they believe in Jesus as a good prophet. Repeatedly in the Quran, Muhammad says, Jesus is not God. But in the New Testament, the eyewitnesses who saw and heard Christ insisted Jesus claimed to be God by both his words and his actions. Mark chapter two, he forgives the sins of a man who's lowered on a mat from the ceiling, never having seen the guy before, and all the religious people say that's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sin. Yeah, by claiming to forgive the sin of that guy, Jesus is claiming to be God. And in John 8, 58, Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am. And the Jews did not call God G-O-D. They called him I am, Yahweh. And Jesus very intentionally took the name of the eternal preexistent God, applied it to himself, and they picked up stones to stone it for blasphemy. So, you see, the basic issue is who is Jesus? And Judaism, Islam, and Christianity disagree. Now, here's my problem with Islam. I have a lot of respect for the fact that one of the five pillars of Islam is give alms to the poor. I respect that. Obviously, Jesus taught that. I appreciate that Muhammad had a very high view of Jesus as a good, good prophet. But here's some of the problems with it. The miracle of Islam is not a person. It's a book, the Quran. In order to know that revelation, the clear revelation of God, the Quran, best, you have to learn Arabic. In other words, God is revealing himself in Arabic most clearly. The miracle of Christianity is not a book. It's not the Bible. It's Jesus Christ, the person who is God in human form. So, am I going to be attracted to a religion that says Arabic? That's what you got to go. Or no, Jesus loves the world and gives him his life for everybody. Second difference is, Muhammad came with a sword. And let's be honest, it was not pretty for North Africa and for Europe, what the Muslims did. And one of the largest churches in the 2nd and 3rd century was in Egypt. And that church got slaughtered. So, Muhammad came with a sword. Jesus came with a towel. And he served people. And I am convinced that the reason that more people are followers of Christ than any other religion is because of his love, his serving, as well as his truth that he outlined very, very clearly. So, those are two of the reasons 
that I think it's very difficult to be intellectually honest and to go down the path of Islam. Because there are some real contradictions. The third one is this. Muhammad was born in 570 AD, lived till about 632 AD. So obviously he never met Jesus. He insisted that Jesus never claimed to be God. Sorry, the eyewitnesses who saw Jesus, who heard Jesus, clearly wrote he claimed to be God. Now who am I going to trust? Am I going to trust a guy who was born 570 years after the fact who obviously never met Jesus? Or am I going to trust the eyewitnesses? Well, that's a no-brainer. Every single time I want to find out about any historical figure, I want to press the information back as far as I can, hopefully to the eyewitnesses. So Jesus clearly claimed to be God, which is a fundamental philosophical and religious mistake that Muhammad and the Quran are making when they deny the deity of Christ.